Okay, it's not that scary. Hey guys, it's Paul Spooner. I am a mechanical engineer and uh, some years ago I developed this geometry for a heat exchanger company that I was working for. Well, it wasn't exactly for them. I developed it on their time and uh, they weren't actually interested in this as a heat exchanger thing. I think it's a fantastic idea. So uh, recently, uh, today, in fact, I redeveloped it so that I could say that I've developed it on my own time now uh, because it's not actually that complicated, but it has three internal surfaces. You kind of see that here. Um, with these volumes. This is the, the green volume here, the red volume, and the purple volume, and they all interleave with each other very nicely so that you get a really good heat exchange. That's kind of the point of a heat exchanger is to exchange heat really well. So these interleave in this, this kind of fascinating way. You can think of it as like with your three fingers of the channels and they kind of cross over each other, except it's a uniform three-dimensional spatial sponge. So you can see how they, uh, the channels are hexagons. They're laid on hexagons and then they cross over each other here. You can see the crossover point where the channels all cross into a rhombic formation. So it goes from a hexagon to a rhombus. These are the three different um, manifolds inside. So most heat exchangers have two internal volumes. This one has three, and you might think that that's a downside. I think it's actually an advantage because with a heat exchanger, you usually have two different fluids. You're exchanging heat between the two of them. With a three volume heat exchanger, you can exchange between three different fluids. So you could have like a control fluid and then uh, that you modulate the speed of, and then another one that's a process fluid and a, a, sec a third one that's a process fluid that are going. You can also have the heat exchanger running and clean one of the volumes. Uh, so you take one of the volumes out of production, you've still got two volumes doing heat exchange, it's not going to be as efficient, but it'll be pretty efficient, and then you can run a cleaning fluid or a purge or uh, whatever you need to do to clean out that third volume, then you can convert that one back over to a process fluid and clean the other two volumes in that way. So you can cycle through all three volumes, clean the whole thing without ever taking it out of production, and without ever taking the thing, uh, disconnecting it from the, the factory or whatever. So I think that is just really, really cool because uh, disconnecting heat exchanger and like taking it out of service and cleaning it is a huge hassle and it uh, makes a lot of downtime and you don't want downtime in your factory. So it's got the possibility for having three heat exchange fluids instead of only two, like a normal one. It's got the ability to clean all three uh, volumes without taking the heat exchanger out of production. The third feature is that it is a self-supporting. Let's just look at this for a minute. So this is the surface of the heat exchanger. And you might think that this is like a very complicated shape, but it turns out it's actually quite simple. It's just these seven vertices. <laughs> what are the odds? So the uh, seven vertices, and then they've got some thickness because of course you can't have a zero thickness wall heat exchanger. And so that's doubled, um, opposing each other. Uh, and you might think of one of these as the inside, one of these is the outside, but it actually turns out that if you change this to appear like this, you can see that one of these is the blue side and one of them is the orange side, but they actually flip. They actually flip over each other. So this side is blue and this side is orange. So it's not really inside and outside as much as it is one side and the other side of the hyperboloid surface. And uh, of course this is, is mirrored and rotated and and, uh, and flipped over several times to make this surface, but you can see that that is the, the basic shape and it just repeats itself um, throughout the whole thing. So one of the nice things about the shape, of course, is that if you don't like this particular geometry, you could uh, change it. So you could just you know take this, maybe you want this to be a little more curvy like this. You want to have a, a bit more of a curve to it. Maybe you want this to kind of come in like this. And uh, now the, the internal volume has a, a different shape, but it's still gonna be manifold. It's still gonna have the same uh, kind of properties of having those three different volumes, uh, but just got a, a slightly different um, slightly different geometry. And this might actually work better. I don't know. I haven't optimized this for flow or anything. I haven't run any FDA on it or CFD, but the the basic the basic geometry I think is very sound. It's It's a a very solid kind of shape. Uh, I should probably 3D print some and uh, and see what kind of, you know, see if it distorts easily or whatever. Um, 3D print it out of, out of plastic or something. That's not a bad idea. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, but anyway, that is the, uh, that is the whole thing. Um, it's a, a three volume hyperboloid. Uh, we should probably, you can see here, one of the cross sections is uh, this kind of squiggly shape. It's intended to be flowing uh, this direction, so in and out, you know, that way, or or this way, up and down. 
So you'd run one fluid down, two fluids up, or however you want to do it. This would be almost impossible to manufacture in any other way than 3D printing. So that's probably why nobody does this yet. I think this is a great idea. I think somebody should definitely, uh, you know, turn this into a product. Uh, the link to the geometry in the Blender file is, uh, it's, it'll be in the description. I'll, I'll put a link in the description and you can download this whole file and uh, play around with it and do whatever you want. So that is that. That is that. That is that.